Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the place where we not only talk about what's going on in the gun world, but also how we're going to fix it together. The content that I'm going to show you this morning is going to blow your mind because we are seeing more and more and more articles just like this written from the AP questioning gun control and actually saying facts that you would expect to hear on this channel undermining state bans, assault weapon bans, magazine bans. This is interesting and everything is always linked per usual. And if you are new or a returning viewer, please consider hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel, and turning the notification bell on. We need as many of you out there as humanly possible to get in here so we can pass the blessing of the Second Amendment along to the next generation, particularly now in light of current events. And speaking of current events, you will notice there is a void on my wall. I'm starting a new hashtag. It's called hashtag take down the button. That button will no longer be shown on my channel in any way. It is no longer a point of pride and uh, prominence on my channel simply because the current events that have led to this point. If you have a Twitter account, if you have a YouTube channel, if you have any type of creation of device at all, hashtag take down the button and thank you so much for listening to that. Now, let's get into this because we got to talk about some stuff. Hashtag take down the button. Anyway, let's keep going. Mass situations lead to widening divide on state gun policies. This is from David from 47 minutes ago on Saturday morning. Now, that's an interesting one. Caught my attention. Listen to how he set this up and listen to how he undermines gun control completely. Again, from the AP, somehow this made it out into the ether. Jefferson City, Missouri. Mass situations have commanded public attention on a disturbingly frequently basis, frequent basis across the U.S., from a supermarket in Buffalo, New York, to an elementary school in Uvalde, to a recent shooting in California Dance Hall. We know all these events, but this is the lead-in. Rather than provoking a unified response from elected officials, each additional shooting seems to be widening the political divide among states on who would be allowed to have guns and what types are okay. So, that's a pretty good assessment of the situation. That's pretty normal. Some states lean more towards heavy control, which is unconstitutional. And then some states lead towards full, full complete constitutionality, which will resolve the issue. But let's keep going. I'm obviously biased. I don't pretend not to be. Anyway, listen to this quote. Obviously, no one wants to see these tragedies occur. Their loss of life, but how the problem is viewed and therefore what the response is to that problem is night and day difference said Daniel Webster, an American health professional affiliated with the Johns Hopkins Center for Gun Violence Solutions. Now, what's interesting about this is the Johns Hopkins Center for Gun Violence is funded by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg-affiliated Bloomberg organization. That's a gun control organization. A lot of the stuff coming out of that center is extremely gun control oriented, but listen to what they're saying out loud. For the third straight year, the U.S. in 2022 recorded more than 600 terrible situations in which at least four people were killed or injured, according to the Gun Violence Archive. Now again, do you remember 600 incidents? No, you do not, because the Gun Violence Archive is directly linked to the far-left Slate magazine, started as a joke and then became an actual statistic that they, they uh, quote on the news media and politicians. It's completely fictitious. It doesn't talk about gang violence, doesn't talk about any type of violence or any of the correlating context, only numbers. But let's keep going because that's kind of part of the problem. This is where they undermine it. So-called assault weapons bans on certain semi-automatic weapons are among the most talked about gun control measures, but they do not seem to be associated with reductions in deadly situations, according to a study by Webster, Bloomberg-backed research group, and others that analyzed more than 600 situations in 45 states from 84 to 2017. The study ex excluded shootings related to gangs and drugs, which is something that Gun Violence Archive, or GVA, does not do. And here's the last one. This will blow your mind as well. Quote, The research shows that you're much better off focusing on who has those guns rather than what the gun is, said Michael Siegel, a professor of public health and community medicine at Tufts University who researches violence committed with guns. Why is that not everywhere? Why is that not posted everywhere? Maybe it has something to do with the idea that this is a narrative against infringing upon an entire nation's rights, not about solving the actual issue, which is driving all of these points. All of these articles are coming out of California. They're based off of the terrible tragedies that are coming out of California because they have the ultimate gun control there. They have to come up with a reason, and they've run out of things to ban. They've run out of things to legislate against, and now they're having to face the harsh reality that maybe, just maybe, that's not the solution. That's what I've got for you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget, hashtag take down the button, and I will see you on the next one.
I'm Braden. See you later.